She lives in Las Vegas. She's brave warriors battle in an age of relentless evil. That's what it takes to be a winner and make it to 1989 starting lineup. Winners like Esiason, Craig, Walker, Singletary, White, Elway, and more to add to your collection. With all new uniforms, poses, and cards for 1989. Each sold separately. Only starting lineup gives you the men who prove they've got what it takes. Witnesses appear on camera to report sightings of American soldiers in captivity. Hello Tiki Creeps, and welcome to Creeper's Cove for another episode of Dark, Dark Paradise. Paradise. Jinx. You owe me some coke. You owe me coke. Oh. You owe me coke? What? Coke? Hmm? Welcome to Dark Paradise, where we explore the supernatural, mm -hmm. the unexplained, the mm -hmm. paranormal, for sure. the dare I say... Tiki? Creepy? Yeah. yeah okay. All of the above, All right, probably. yes, yes. Dark Paradise, where we escape our escapism in search of dark paradise. Right? Yeah. Yeah. On this, what do we, what, 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 what do we settle on? Not program, not a podcast. Event. Event. On this event, the show of an event... We go to those far off countries that are considered tiki locales by all of our tiki forefathers, the Don Beachcombers, right? Mm -hmm. But instead of going there just for their drinks, we bring back their cryptids. We bring back their spirits, their specters, their ghosts, all things unexplained in those areas of the world. Dark paradise. Are you excited? Very, yes. Yeah. On this episode, we are going to Camp, Camp, Camp. Cambodia. That's right. Do you know anything about Cambodia? I know a little bit more now, but yeah. next to nothing. Other than, you know. The Khmer Rouge. Right. All the bad stuff. Yeah, it's unfortunate that, that area of Southeast Asia is just, at least from an American's perspective, just a lot of bad shit. Yeah. Not good. The Khmer Rouge are Yuck. fucking brutal. Yeah. I mean, genocide. Genocide's never good. Never. I can't think of a single sentence where it includes the word genocide, and it's good. Never. Spermicide. Okay. Like a, like a spermal genocide. Um, sure. If you take anything away from this episode of Dark Paradise where we go to Cambodia, you will learn that genocide... No blends. Although, I feel like I wish and hope that they already knew that. I hope so. If you didn't know that, probably not the kind of people we want to hang out with. So maybe you should go find some other event to peep on. Yeah. Because you can't creep on this one. No. But that's right. We are going to Cambodia. Mm. In this episode, we are going to be talking about some very, very creepy things, as we do. As we do here at Creeper's Cove, always. I'm going to be talking about a very, very scary story about an op. Oh. Do you know anything about the op? I don't know anything about the op. The op is terrifying. Oh. We'll get into it later. Okay. It might be the scariest entity that we've talked about so far in Dark Paradise. Really? Just on just sheer horror and visually terrifying. Okay. So, that's Can't coming wait. later. Yeah. What about you? Do you have anything you're going to be sharing with uh, the I, creepers? I do. I have a really, really, I don't want to say fun story because there's yeah. a lot of backstory that's really terrible, but it's very interesting. Um, okay. It is very spooky. Um, I'm really excited about mine. 
Yeah. So we don't know anything about one another's stories. That's I don't know true. what she's going to be sharing with me. I don't know. Or she doesn't know what I'm going to be sharing with her. And you don't know any of, any, any, any of this. So that's why you're here. And we're glad you are. So we're also going to be playing a very, very special horror movie themed game. As you know, every episode we play a brand new game where this one, the Queen of the Cove, plays the unwilling participant. Very unwilling. Yes. We've done Emo Jeepers Creepers. Killed it. Yeah, we've done Say My Name, Say My Name. Killed it a little less. A little bit less. <laughs> Tonight's brand new game. First time she's playing it. Creepy Yogi. In this game, I, uh, I sing off-key versions of popular hit songs, but I change the lyrics so that I'm describing classic horror movies. In this one, the Queen of the Cubs is going to have to guess what movie I am singing about, but there's also bonus points at stake here, right? Thank God. So she has a chance to recoup, you know, those zeros that she's been getting the past couple weeks. Um. <laughs> she has a chance to get some bonus points where she can figure out the, the song I'm covering, band name and or artist, and song name, as well as the movie that I'm talking about. So, she has a chance to, you know, gain some ground. I feel pretty good about yeah, it. Yeah, you do? Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. So, you know, but we can't do all that just yet. No. Uh, no. There's something we gotta do. Before we talk about spirits, we have to have some spirits. That's right. We gotta be in the right frame of mind, liver, soul, and brain. Sure. Right? Yeah. So, uh, our buddy Tex over there. Oh, Tex, you have everything you need for this uh, cocktail? So he does. It's a lot of weird stuff over there. I don't. There's some stuff. Yeah, I would. I have no idea what you're gonna be making with all that. Little, little terrified. There's some ingredients here that I don't recognize in classic tiki or tropical drinks. Or drinks in general. <laughs> or drinks in general. That's right. Is that? Is that fucking fish sauce? It is. That it is, is fish, fish sauce. sauce. All right, Cambodia, you're about to fuck us up. So for this Tanduai sponsored cocktail, Tex is gonna be making. A very, very cool named drink. It is called 1,000 Tears of a Tarantula. It's a fucking dope name. Yeah. Just hope it doesn't taste like shit because it sounds really fucking cool. Yeah, but right. the ingredients sound really fucking weird. That's true. <laughs> all right. All right, buddy. It's all yours, Tex. Do your worst, buddy. Thousand Tears of a Tarantula. This Tanduai sponsored cocktail has got me a little nervous. I'm worried. Yeah. So this cocktail was actually made by a American bartender who went to Cambodia on a business trip with a Cambodian American partner that she has at the, at the Chicago bar uh, to scout opening up a, a cocktail bar there. Oh. So it's called Le Boutier, and the the female bartender who came up with this drink is Anne-Marie Segoy. So, there's actual tiki cocktails in Cambodia, which is pretty cool. Now, this name is really awesome because Anne-Marie Segoy is uh, paying homage to this band called Dengue Fever, which is a Los Angeles-based band um, that covers 60s Cambodian rock and roll. Oh, which, interesting. Which I was shocked by. I had no idea about this stuff, right? So... Cambodian rock and roll was very much a thing in the 60s and early 70s before, of course, the Khmer Rouge. Right. And like most communist uprisings, one of the first things they did, that they do to silence the majority and to silence the people is they destroy culture. Culture is art. Art is music. So one of the things they did was they just started eradicating all these amazing musicians. Right? So not, good. not great. So Dengue Fever pays homage to these bands, these musicians from that time. And they have this mix of like Khmer pop and psych and garage rock and surf billy. One of the songs that they have is 1000 Tears of a Tarantula, paying homage to those bands. So, let's see what uh what Texas put in first. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, obviously, starting with our Tanduai Filipino rum, distinctly Filipino, undeniably world class. He's doing one and a half ounces of Tanduai gold. Mm. There it is. Perfect. 
Now, it still sounds tiki. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's got rum. Sure. Tiki. Yeah. Next thing, 0.75 ounces, lime juice. Standard. Tiki? Love it. Yeah. Still tiki. Yeah. All right, so 0.75 ounces lime juice. Go ahead and throw that in that tin. Perfect. Okay. Oh, now he's grabbing the coconut cream. Okay. Tiki? Tiki. Still in the realm of tiki here. Yeah. 0.5 ounces of coconut cream. Fluffy coconut clouds of deliciousness. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. This is a new one that we haven't used. Benedictine. This is a French liqueur that we uh, had to recently buy for this exact cocktail. We haven't, we didn't have it. It's, it's like 27 herbs and spices that they use to make this this liqueur, the French. Like KFC. Just like KFC. Tastes nothing like it though, mm. unfortunately for them. <laughs> so he's gonna be doing 0.5 ounces of Benedictine liqueur. Perfect. Okay. Now what's he grabbing? Oh, okay. Pineapple juice. Unsweetened pineapple juice. 0.25 ounces. We're in good shape for a tiki drink. Sounds like a standard cocktail. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's next? Okay. Now, this is where it's getting weird. We'll get off the rails just a little bit. This is a house-made kefir curry syrup. Kefir curry syrup. Now, we had to make this one because we didn't have this on stock. Right. Right, so what it is is hot water. You use about a liter of hot water, four tablespoons of red curry paste, mm -hmm. right? Six kefir lime leaves, uh, about two kilograms of white sugar. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm I'm going metric because that's what they provided us with. Oh right. Right, sound very continental, intercontinental, mm -hmm. worldly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're an international man. Ho ho ho! <laughs> All right, you boil that about twenty minutes. Then you find strain. You have your kefir curry syrup. Okay, so he's gonna be using 0.75 ounces of curry syrup. That still kind of sounds like a, a good curry, like that you would eat with the coconut. Absolutely. Curry, right? But just in a mug or a glass. Okay. I mean, the curry yeah. syrup has sugar to offset the curry savoriness. Yeah. So I'm I'm good with this. That we're still okay. we're still tiki cocktail. Okay, but now look what he's grabbing. Oh. Okay, guys, that's fish sauce. Okay. He's gonna do one dash of fish sauce. I gotta be honest, it, it sounds... That was a heavy dash. <laughs> it's, it's Tex. It's Tex mix, that's what happens here. Dash, probably about three dashes. This would be very fish saucy, all right? I don't know, how do you feel about this one? Um... I don't know. I... I could go either way. Yeah. Okay. We got a little bit of yeah. salty from the fish sauce. Yeah. I think with everything else, it could still be okay. Okay. I'm worried about that garnish sitting out there, though. Yeah, we haven't gone to that yet. I know. We're getting there. First, he's going to add some pebble ice. Again, we don't measure here. We're not exactly when it comes to ice. Okay. What you want. We do about half a tin. So he's going to put a scoop in there. Perfect. And now, of course, my favorite part. This brings me much, much joy. Tex is going to go ahead and cap that. He's going to shake, shake it to up, his baby. heart's content. Shake it up. I haven't seen him that excited since uh, he had his chainsaw before you asked him to leave it outside. Rightfully so. Yeah. I stand by that decision. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, buddy. What glass are you going to put it in? Okay, looks like he's grabbing a Collins. Mm -hmm. Grab a nice Collins zombie glass. Okay. Looks like he's using the, the old school Libby naked hula dancers. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It looks good. It looks like a tiki drink. It looks like a painkiller of some sort, it does, you know? That, that yeah. coconut cream, okay. All right. Oh. Okay. All right. He's adding more ice. Good. Now, this is where it gets complicated. I knew it was coming. I'm really was... not happy about it. <laughs> That's pickle. All right. Tex is choosing a nasty, nasty pickle, okay? Yeah, all right, just gonna shove it in there, are ya? Okay. All right, that's it, that's our garnish. Now he's gonna choose a surf side sips glass straw. The only thing that could possibly redeem this questionable cocktail is adding a little class with glass. He's gonna choose his favorite surf side sips glass reusable straw. Looks like he's going, oh, that's a nice little blue. Mm, that's good. Very pretty. All right. 
Looks good against that green pickle. <laughs> there it is. It is. The, yeah. It's something. There it is. The 1,000 tears of a tarantula. You did it, buddy. Good job. You did it. Yeah. Thumbs up to you, friend, for making us drink this. That's it, guys. That is Anne Marie Segoy's thousand year or thousand tears of a tarantula. Not a thousand years. It's a long time for a tarantula. Yeah, I don't know the average lifespan though. Probably not a thousand years. I don't know though. Alright, buddy, bring it on over. Alright. Look at that. My pickle looks like a tentacle. It does look like a tentacle. It's very cephalopodian. I could smell it too. You could smell it. I hate pickles. I don't know if you guys can hear, that is our cat. That is Parker. Mm -hmm. So just don't mind her. It's spooky season. We have to have a cat in here. Right. So anyways, maybe she is <laughs> smelling the fish sauce. Oh, maybe. In our tiki <laughs> cocktail. That's right. Anne-Marie Segoy, you are a mad, mad mixologist scientist. Look at this thing. That is definitely a fucking pickle garnish. You know, whiskey picklebacks. Okay. Why not? Why not a house-made pickle garnish? Tentacle. Boing, boing. Look don't at that. Touch it. <laughs> One thousand tears of a tarantula. Let's give it a sip. Our surfside sips. First sip. Our spooky surfside sip. You ready? I, maybe. If you got one, raise them. To guy and Mabuhai. To Cambodian rock and roll. Yeah. And good All luck. Right. Okay. I don't understand. I don't hate this. I don't understand. Oh. 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 I don't Do you get that? Take another sip. So that curry paste, that kefir curry syrup doesn't only add like a savoriness to counter the sweet yeah it gives you a warmth at the back of the tongue at the back of like the throat yeah that's interesting i don't know why this works i think that's pretty damn good it's i would say very good it's very tasty the i mean the only problem i have is the pickle but i hate pickles so that's my own issue throw it I might. Throw it in the... Throw it out. Yuck. Go. Do it. Okay. Do it. I'm not Just chuck it. I'm not chucking a pickle. We have animals. All right. I don't know. They probably don't want to eat it either. Maybe not. Oh. That's so, my only issue. Otherwise, it's very yeah. good. All right, guys. Anne-Marie Segoy from La Boutier in Cambodia. You crazy bastard. Crazy bitch. Just making a I crazy, really... shockingly delicious drink. Shocking. 1,000 tears of a tarantula. Yeah. Now... Like we said, she uh, she wanted to honor Cambodian rock and roll that you know was basically eradicated by the Khmer Rouge genocide and you know their destruction of culture in Cambodia. Now there's a really cool documentary uh, that came out in 2014 called "Don't Think I've Forgotten: Cambodia's Lost Rock and Roll." Now it's directed by John Perosi and he talks about all these bands that you know were victims of the Khmer Rouge regime and um, the Cambodian genocide. So we would love to play you guys some music right now of some of these bands that I had no idea existed. None. And we were big rock and roll people. Yeah, what's, obviously. What's your, what's your favorite band? My favorite band is the Grateful Dead. All right, I grew up on the Beatles, so it's like, that was, that's our jam. We had no idea None. On the other side of the world, yeah, there were these garage rock bands, these psych bands coming out of uh, Southeast Asia. I know. Right? So, the first track we're going to listen to is BCK, Boxy Cham Krong. Name the song, BCK. Hit it! <laughs> it's fucking good. All right. Look at that. This could be on any of your guys' playlists. It should be. <laughs> 
It's going to be playing here at Creeper's Cove. It's going to be added to the rotation. Definitely. Look at that. Perfect. Cut. Boom. BCK by Baxi Chum Krong. All right, this next one is another, you know, iconic Cambodian rock and roll musician. Pen Ran. Ready? This one is called There's Nothing to Be Ashamed Of. Hit it! Yep. Fuck yeah. So. Cut. Guys, you could actually try to hunt down the soundtrack for this this movie, for this documentary film. It's a film, it's not a movie. Sorry, you gotta give it respect. It's a film. Okay? Don't Think I've Forgotten. Cambodia's Lost Rock and Roll, directed by John Perosi. Um, I think they did a repress of the vinyl of this. Um, I'm going to be hunting it down because I want it here for the Cove. For sure. Pretty damn awesome. Yeah. It's just full of like Sin Sisamath, Chua Malai, Hoi Mais, all these amazing musicians that could have been lost to history because of the Khmer Rouge and the shit that was going on there with the Communist Revolution. Yeah. But fortunately, people, good good things don't stay hidden for too long. So, yeah. Boom. Support support Dust Digital, the record label. Support Cambodian rock and roll. Don't think I've forgotten. That's the name of it, but also I haven't forgotten. Because I didn't know about it. I couldn't have forgot about it. Yeah, I just, just learned about it. You just learned about awesome. it. Awesome. If you forgot it, yeah. we need to have yeah. a different conversation. That's true. So, Anne-Marie Segoy, thank you. Yes, thank you. It was actually finding this recipe is what Tex brought to our attention. Cambodian rock and roll. Yeah. So him finding this actually opened up a whole world of new music that's going to be on our, you know, Tiki Billy playlist here. It all works with it. Now, they're not just rockers in Cambodia. They're actually, even though we we, we consider them a tiki locale, they are a place that actually has tiki bars. Mm. I mean, besides La Boutier, we can get amazing cocktails like this. There's just some down and dirty places there. Like, imagine going on a pub crawl in, in Phnom Penh. You can go to a place called Ricky Tiki Tavi. Heard of it? No? It's in Cambodia. 4.4 4 stars out of 598 people weighing in with their reviews. Oh. Boom. It's got to be good. Check it out. Look at a picture of it. Ricky Tiki Tavi. Go there. What about Voodoo Boulevard? Oh, that sounds fun. Sounds pretty fucking tiki to me. Yeah. Sounds creepy tiki. Shout out Devin Devereaux. Love you, buddy. Hope you feel better. Just found he got COVID. Yeah, luckily, he was vaccinated, so he's not feeling, you know, too bad. Get vaccinated, friends. Yeah. Perfect. Speedy recovery, Devin. All right. There are a bunch of, like, Tiki Hut. This place called Tiki Hut in uh, Sihanoukville, Cambodia. Probably butchered that. But I don't know. That sounded pretty oh, good. Okay. I wouldn't have okay. questioned that okay. at all. This place called Sundown Social Club. Oh. Right? Then there's this crazy place that I found that we should just stay there. Check out that out. Trip, Trip Advisors got this place called Tiki Guest House. Ooh. Tiki Guest House. It's near uh, near Bridge in Kamput, Cambodia. 54 reviews, four and a half stars. Look at this place. Look at these pictures of this place. How fun does that look? Oh my. Right? Boom. You guys can go to Cambodia. You guys can drink a thousand tiers of tarantulas. You guys can go to Voodoo Boulevard, Ricky Tiki Tavi, and then go crash at the Tiki Guest House. This place is creepy tiki as shit. All right. Right? It's tiki, but it's also very, very creepy. That's what we're getting into now, friends. Yeah. It's now time to scare the shit out of one another. This is dark paradise. We can't just have, you know, exotic cocktails. We have to talk about some exotic spirits. Yeah. Some exotic cryptids. You know? Yeah. Exotic spookiness. So, you said you have something... I do, and Is I'm that so true? excited. Okay. Let me get my right. resource guide so I don't butcher it. All right, you tiki creeps. We talked about Cambodia's tiki scene, right? Ricky Tiki Tavi, Voodoo Boulevard, Tiki Guest House, right? La Boutier, uh -huh. right? Yes. Now it's time to introduce the creepiness. Time to get dark in paradise. Time to get creeped out with Queen. What do you got? Okay, I am really excited about this. My story tonight is um, Ghost Town, the Cambodian Cemetery 
where the living outnumber the dead. Okay. Okay. Interesting title. For yeah. Okay. So this has got some spooky, and it's also got some kind of horrifying facts of life about Cambodia that I didn't know. Some historical context. Yeah. That's great. Perfect. Um, okay. So we are going to be down the river from um, Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so just down the river is a community, I will say, okay. um, called S'more San. Mm, s'mores. <laughs> S'more San. It is a slum is how it's referred to. I don't know if that's the proper okay. term, but it's a slum built on a cemetery that's still visited by the relatives of those buried there. Okay. Um, but where about 500 people live. So they, they live in the, in the cemetery? Yes. Like so they live in a cemetery mm -mm. Um, in these shacks, okay. basically, yeah. like these, these man-made shacks. Yeah. Um, so with a an estimate of 500 people living there and 200 buried the living outnumber uh -huh. the dead. That's creepy. All right, those are some tiki creeps. Uh-huh. All right, let's hear it. So a lot of these um, places are like corrugated, like iron shacks mm -hmm. um, that are kind of on stilts to um, be raised from like plastic yeah. and debris and um, all of that. So I didn't know that part of the Khmer Rouge issue um was that they had abolished private ownership of land yes yeah. i didn't know that communism uh right um i don't know much about communism sure, 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 sure. um so this has caused a lot of um obviously issues um and a lot of these like slums to be kind of built around cambodia um it's an esti it's estimated that more than 25,000 family live in um these types of, of housing. Yeah, these like kind of communities. Mm -hmm. Um it's about 277 urban communities is what they're being called. Okay. Um so the interesting thing about this is Cambodian belief where the majority of people are Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Um the belief system there is um you need to be cremated and your body needs to be cremated in order for your spirit to move on after you die. Interesting. So a lot of people that live in the cemetery believe that they are literally walking around with like angry spirits that weren't able to be passed, like to go past to the next. Voluntarily. Room. They, they chose to live there with a bunch of angry spirits. No. Ah. And that's kind of what we're going to get into. Okay. All right, so right. just a kind of a real quick, I, I recommend doing research on this because this is super interesting. Right. But um, basically the long, you know, the short version of this is um, development in Cambodia is growing. Okay. And because of that, a lot of these citizens are being pushed into these gotcha. kind of makeshift communities. Yeah. So, you know, with the developers coming in a lot of them from overseas the options aren't really there um gotcha. so the cambodian um like authorities as far as i've read have tried to do the right thing where they can um they've set up pretty good um alternative housing um you know but the problem is it's so far outside of where mm -hmm. they're living you know their families get separated the, you know jobs all of that and it makes it a little bit difficult so a lot of them aren't choosing to live in the cemetery but gotcha. um they are so um there's a little bit of issues um with this cemetery now mm -hmm. um signs of development have come in to um, kind of the neighboring areas so a lot of citizens are worried that they will soon be forced out um, so one of the um, citizens that lives there who's lived there for 16 years she's now lived with the ghost uh, ghosts 16 um, with the ghosts. Yeah. Okay. She no longer believes that ghosts exist after living there for so long. Um, but she's counting on this superstition um, in order to not be displaced. And she says, and I quote, 
I don't believe that the government would dare to destroy the graves in order to develop. That would be a sin, and it would attract bad karma. Uh. So, hopefully, I mean, ever, again, everything that I've read, there's a lot of um, videos on YouTube that are really interesting that kind of go in and talk to the citizens. Um, you know, they've made a community there yeah. that they really enjoy, um, that they don't want to leave. So, let's hope that she's right. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. The, the living outnumber the dead. Imagine living 16 years yeah. in a cemetery. And, you know, some people are very afraid. <sighs> That's um, true. But it beats the alternative. I and mean, she's of... obviously wrong. <laughs> There's fucking ghosts there. Sure. There's ghosts there. Maybe they're just not, like, present to her. Like, maybe they've not had a problem with her, so she's not seen them. What a poor, poor person. Just, like, the ghosts... I don't want to hang out with that bitch. I gotta, I'm gonna go find someone a little more interesting I mean, to spook at. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's um, I, that combined with the belief that they yeah. are, they can't move on. So, the 500 people that live there, the majority of them, um, believe that they are literally walking amongst spirits. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what I'm living with. Yeah. We're always walking amongst the dead. Right. Some of them are alive, but dead. Right. So, yeah, I, I relate to that. Yeah. <coughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Man. I found that, and I had to do <coughs> that one, because yeah. that is super interesting. It's also got a lot of that, like... Social context. Social context mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of why it's important to be mindful when you yeah. visit these tiki <coughs> communities of... You know, making sure you're not harming the... It reminds me a lot of what's going society. on in, in Hawaii exactly. right now. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's uh, irritating my bronchial region. All that curry. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, like uh, everybody going to visit Hawaii and, you know, the natives, the locals there are, are telling people, you know, please don't come here. Right. You know, because it's getting overdeveloped. Mm -hmm. You know, the hospitality industry is completely pushing them out. Mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're being limited on how much water they can use. Yet the resorts all get to have as much water as they want. Yeah. So it's just yeah, it's it's definitely something that's creepy. Yeah. You know, living on a cemetery. Right. Living for amongst. Yeah. The spirits, but it's also really important to be aware yeah. that, you know, you may be able to go to yeah. Cambodia and travel for relatively cheap, yeah. but you just have to be mindful about. Be mindful of that stuff. Yeah. Just like when you're traveling in like Guam. Right. Right. You ask permission. Right. Otherwise. You're gonna get, you're gonna get some, uh, yeah. some bad mojo, guys. Yeah. So be mindful. If something happens with S'more Son, I will be, yeah. I will be obsessively following up on it because it's very interesting. Oh yeah. Um, and that article was from a couple years ago, and I've not found anything recently about any further development. So let's fingers crossed that that's not gonna displace more people than have already been displaced. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you all got creeped out with the Queen. I sure did. I also learned something. It's perfect. The more you know. The more you know. <laughs> oh no, my pickle went in my glass. Ooh. It's still a fucking good cocktail. What a weird cocktail. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> so, we got creeped out with the queen. Right? We have our spirits. We're talking about spirits. Cheers. Let's get another... Spooky Surfside Sip here from our sponsor, Surfside Sips. Mm. I can smell that pickle so much. I know. It's like the nose on this cocktail is all pickle. It is all pickle. It's crazy. Maybe that's what it's for. Maybe. Maybe. Huh. <clears throat> now, of course, this cocktail didn't ask for Jacques, so we couldn't use the Luau Lads. Right. Right. It didn't ask for any you know fruity syrup, so we couldn't use Liquid Alchemist. Right. There's another one of our new sponsors. Um, but we got to use our Surfside Sip straw to suck down some fish sauce. And some Tanduai rum. And some Tanduai rum. So, I think I'm properly lubricated. I have this nice curry sauce warmth in my throat. I think I'm ready to creep you out. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, it's interesting you, you brought up these like these communities of huts. Um, this actually, this story about the op takes place in a hut village. Okay. okay. Right? Do you know anything about the op? I know nothing. You know nothing about nothing. the op? Nothing. Okay. Let I'm me really tell you. Scared. Let me tell you a little bit about the op. So, okay. the op 
is a Cambodian version of a spirit that is found all over Southeast Asia. I most mostly knew it as the Cross Sioux. We've okay. re- we've referenced the Cross Sioux before. Yeah. So the Cross Sioux, or in Cambodia, known as the Op, or in Indonesia, is the Kuyang, um, or the Layak in Indonesia, or the Penangal in Malaysia, Ooh. right? Or the Manana Angal in the Philippines. Uh huh. I need a sip after that one. That was a tough one. You want to try to say it? Say it together. Ready? Manana Angal. Manana Angal. Man, that's tough. <clears throat> ah, all right. Feels nice though. <laughs> yeah, right? It feels good. Yeah. Or the Mai Lai, the Mai Lai in Vietnam. Okay. So it's a nocturnal female spirit. Okay. All right? Yeah. It's found in most okay. Southeast Asian folklores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It manifests itself as a woman, usually young and beautiful. Oh, hello. Except for some other things about her. Which I think I'll save. I'll save till the end. Okay. Right? Just in your head, you have this beautiful Southeast Asian woman. Yes. Right? In the prime of her youth. Yes. But then I digress. Okay. So this story from Cambodia is about the op. It is a Cambodian ghost story. When I was little, there was a story that got passed around the neighborhood. It was a ghost story to scare the little Khmer children not to stay out past dark. Now, a little background about me. I'm Cambodian, but was born in America. And I'm very proud of the fact that I'm first generation Cambodian American. I was raised in a, you know, a decent sized city in California, uh, but I got to visit Cambodia a lot when I was younger. And when I stayed there, I came across these stories. Now I had to stay in these low income duplex community types, uh, very populated, people living on top of one another, all inhabited by Cambodian immigrant families. Now, Khmer folk are very superstitious people. A lot of it is because Southeast Asia is one of the most haunted parts in the entire world. I grew up with a lot of scary stories, either watching old Asian movies with my mom or hearing passed down tales within the circle of my friends. There are many folk tales in Cambodia that have been passed down via word of mouth from the older generation to ours. And one of the most common is a legend of the op. Squilch, quelch. I stood in front of a tiny hut made of wooden panels and palm mats raised atop wooden stilts. The makeshift window to the hut's left was made of the same material and propped open with a small stick, just a smidge. I looked at the doorless entrance, and with the dim light of the waning moon, I was able to see only a pair of calloused, dirty feet lying limply on the ground. I heard something. As I was taking a step towards the few thatch plank stairs that led to the hut's opening, I heard the pitter-patter of running footsteps, the childish chatter to my right. I looked over at the dirt road and saw three children, a girl and two boys. The girl was in a baggy blouse, clearly a hand-me-down, a brown sarong, ankle-length skirt, commonly worn by Khmer women covered in a yellow floral pattern. The two boys were shirtless and were, clo- were clothed in nothing but khaki cargo shorts. They were all wearing flip-flops and cared not for the dirt that was being kicked up and matted to their dark brown skin. They were playing some version of tag and judging by the patterns of scampering, the little girl must have been the unfortunate one to be it. Suddenly and without warning, the girl stopped and she stared directly at me. Her face considerably paled, and she shakily lifted her arm and pointed to my direction. The other two boys looked at me as well, and both of their jaws dropped. Then an ear-piercing scream erupted from the girl's throat. The boys tripped over their own feet as they bolted in every direction, every direction but towards me, away from me, as though their life depended on it. That was odd, I thought. I turned, not knowing what else to do. I didn't know them, so I didn't follow them. I ascended up the unsurprisingly rickety stairs that led up to the entrance of the hut. I stood in front of the handmade house, peering in, and as I adjusted to the darkness, I 
found my eyes tracing the endlessly long black tresses flowing in chaotic patterns like black ink spilling out onto the cut wood. Here and there, strands and locks of hair that seemed to twitch and then relax, drawing my eyes along the source of its movement. I followed the hair and then froze. The hair had led up to a man's face, wearing an expression that remains forever seared on my mind. His dark almond-shaped eyes bulged, mouth open and gasping for breath. His graying skin speckled with blood I could only imagine was his own. I followed the blood and saw her. Attached to the flowing black hair was a woman's face, her mouth chewing gobs of flesh that was now stuck in her bloody teeth. And just below that face was a very long neck. But instead of a body, entrails, tissue, all just barely hidden by her long hair, a grotesque sight, I saw a beating heart exposed. The source of the flowing hair lay upon the woman's head, which held no body. Instead, attached to an elongated neck that ended with scraps of torn gray skin. Ropes of glistening red entrails and pulsing veins that swayed to and fro as her head bobbed in the air, from which hung purple and pink bulges eyes, which I can only imagine were organs unidentifiable, unidentifiable to my untrained child eye. One organ beat with an recognizable rhythm behind the locks of jet black hair. Her heartbeat. I exhaled a shallow, shuddering breath. How you doing? Mm, not great. <laughs> the head stopped bobbing. The man continued to convulse on the ground, choking and fighting through his very last breaths. Slowly, her head rotated away from him to face mine. Her long hair receding as her head raised from the ground, her entrails following her. She hovered above him. I stared into the white of her eyes. Bits and pieces of what I assumed to be the man's internal organs stuck to her cheek, to her lips, and tangled in her long, stringy black hair. Inhumanly long fangs overlaid her bottom lip. Her mouth twisted, and a guttural, feline-like snarl escaped her mouth. With blistering speed, the yop rushed at me. My eyes snapped open, and I find myself staring into the morning dew. I sat up and looked around until I saw the sun rising from the east. I stood up and began to wander around the jungle, I was trying to find my way home. All the while, in my mouth, a strained taste of iron. The end. That's the op, friends. So, a beautiful disembodied head. Below it, all of her yucky insides. Just floating around, dangling, like an old man's balls. What'd you think of the op? You know what I thought of the op. <laughs> you know. What didn't you like about the op story? Oh, I don't know. The fucking flesh eating, probably. Oh, right. Oh, did you forget? Maybe I have a problem with that. Oh, that's right. So, the Queen of the Cove does not like cannibalism. <laughs> what? Sorry, it's a cool-ass fucking spirit, though. I had to share it. It is a cool spirit, but yuck. Yeah. Op, get out of here. So, there are a lot of different mythologies about the op spirit in Cambodia. Uh, one is that it was a monk who found this woman in a fig tree and feeling sorry for her... He prayed and prayed for her salvation until it passed on. That clearly didn't work. It's all to that one. Another variation is about a shaman who placed a curse on a young woman so that every night she would detach her head from her body. That sounds more right. Yeah. To wander along her village forever hungry and you know, petrifying those that were unfortunate enough to cross her path. Every morning, however, she'd attach herself back to her body and forget everything that happened the night before and just continue living normally as a regular woman. 
fucking terrifying. Which sounds similar to what happened to this woman so in the story. It's the same woman or different women? It could, there's multiple ops. Yeah. So a chilling take on the op is that uh, common prey is, is women during labor. They're attracted to the scent of blood. Ops are known to love the placenta from the newborn, and the best way to protect the birthing of a newborn is to plant thorny bushes around the birthing house and then toss the placenta deep into the jungle to lure it away from your home, away from your child. Now, this one's a little far-fetched, but another story uh, about the op is that the op is a conscious monster that depends on the next generation to keep it alive. So before an op dies, she will pick a blood-related female relative as her successor. In the op's last night, they would force the successor to drink a drop of their blood, ensuring that it lives on. Basically, almost like vampire-like. Sure. Turning it. Uh, this other one is that another banana tree connection here, right? A lot of the, a lot of the stuff we hear about these Southeast Asian cultures are related to trees, specifically the banana tree. So if you plant a banana tree in your backyard, there's a good chance that an op will try to occupy it. Once it has made a home there, you will forever be haunted by its animalistic snarling and its haunting visage. Now, there's this really funny article that I found from Vice <laughs> that says, The Cross Sioux is a girl with serious detachment issues. <laughs> Nailed it, Vice. <laughs> <laughs> So it seems this girl has perfected the art of composed femininity by day. But when night falls, her pretty head floats off her body, followed by a cluster of vital organs and a tangled trail of gleaming guts. Cursed with a voracious appetite for cattle, carrion, and unborn children, she paints the countryside red with her bloodlust. My word. A ghost by another name which smells rotten. And these girls go by many. Known as Krasu in Thailand, like we talked about, the Op in Cambodia, the Penangalan in Malaysia, the Layak in Kayang in Indonesia, the Mananangal... Manana Anga in the Philippines. She even bears strong similarity to the Nukakubi from Japan. Hmm. So the horrific images of the Krasu's disembodied head is firmly imprinted on the, an Asian psyche. Yet her origins are a bit murky. Right? The first of her kind may have been a Cambodian Khmer princess sentenced by her aristocratic husband to burn at the stake for her affair with a lowly soldier. How dare you? As you do. Her only salvation against the oppression of a patriarchal society came in the form of black magic. And she cast a spell, which unfortunately kicked in a little too late. Right? And sustained life in only the unburnt remains, which was her head and her viscera. So, she may be accused of defiance, of defiance and witchcraft or shame for a perverse hunger for flesh and feces, but in a world where the feminine body can sometimes become a liability, the cross sue or the op breaks free she tosses aside the crutches of convention and detaches completely from the logic of the corporeal this is fun the antithesis to the caring mother the faithful wife or the docile daughter she's sick of playing by the rules and her aberration is her liberation she is all our wild thoughts wandering in the darkness our collective frustration and vengeance and our sublime redemption as she wipes her blood-stained mouth on crisp white laundry that has been hung outside to dry. It's little wonder, then, that so many fear the uprising of this disembodied Prasu girl gangs of Asia. They've got spirit, and they're not afraid to let their freak flag fly. Vice is taking some liberties here. Now, you may think this is only living in the realm of stories that are being passed down, but there are frequent sightings of the op or the crust or the, the manaangal or whatever it is in, in tagalog that sounds right so check this out we're gonna play a sighting that we found on youtube it was a sighting of an op and or a cross so check this out <laughs> เอ่อกล้องจากโทรศัพท์มือถือเห็นมั้ยนี่เหรอนี่เหรอนี่นะครับท่านผู้ชมครับกระสือที่บ้านวัดป้อมแก้วหน้าตาเป็นงี้เล
นี่แหละฮะก่อนหน้าที่เธอจะเห็นนี้ชาวบ้านเขาลือกันมาอยู่แล้วว่าเขาเนี่ยมีผีกระสืออ๋อมีการลือกันแล้ว,ลวลือกันถึงขนาดสงสัยบ้านบางหลังเป็นผีกระสือโอเค okay. so what do you think do you think that is an op do you think that is a spirit I mean I'm the skeptic here okay So it says possible explanations for Krasu or op sightings are caused by blazing flames from methane gas particles emitted from rotten organic matters such as such as found in farms and fields, uh, where Krasu sightings are commonly reported. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Sure, science, right? However, according to associate professor Dr. Surinthanarthadep uh, Tao Preun, nailed it, an energy researcher. From uh, the University of Technology in Thornbury, the hypothesis that the Krasu is actually burning methane gas particles is impossible, because not enough methane is ever emitted from rotten organic matter to be able to cause an ignition, and that even if the methane gas particles did ignite, the burning would be confined to the surface of the organic flammable matter and will not lead to floating flames that allegedly give the illusion of this spirit, the op or the Krasu. An anatomical interpretation is that when the head is pulled off from the human body, other organs such as intestines, hearts, and lungs will not come together with the head. Well, it's supernatural. Hmm. So this whole theory that it's just burning gas can't be. It's easy to say, but in practice, so when you're seeing these things floating high into the trees, or fucking eating people. Doesn't doesn't play out. I'm not saying it's not supernatural. Yeah. I just don't know. All right. I, ha- I have I have maybe some issue with the op. What's your issue with the op? I don't know your motivation, honey. What are you doing? Why? Well, it depends on what origin you're going with. I mean, she she was in love, so she slept with a lowly soldier, and then was burnt at the stake like a witch. So her whole thing is now she just fucking goes on these violent bloodlust rampages. I don't know. It seems a bit far seems... fetched for me. Oh, this seems far fetched. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the explanation does. Yeah. Like I have zero doubt that the the op is probably a very real thing. But I just need to know the motivation. I feel incomplete. Okay. With any of these. Tell you what. Explanation. We'll go to Cambodia. Okay. We'll stay at the Tiki Guest House. Okay. We we'll get a couple of drinks at the Voodoo Boulevard. Yeah. Right. We'll go to Ricky Tiki Tavi for a nightcap. Yeah. And then we'll go sleep in the cemetery where the living outnumber the dead. Okay. And I'll just lay there and let an op try to come, and you can see what 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 they're all about. Okay. And then you can ask them. What's I will their... ask her. What you are you doing? Him. Why? Well, what's your motivation? Like, why are you doing this? Perfect. Yeah, I just want to know why. Yeah. Alright. Just gotta know why, guys. That's it. That's you do anything you want. As long as you defend it with a good why. Yeah. I just need to know, like, your motivation. Perfect. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Alright, Tiki Creeps. Now it's time for my favorite segment. When we do a horror movie themed game. With this one, the Queen of the Cove, serving, excuse me, as the unwilling participant, the unwilling contestant, who begrudgingly has to come up with some answers based on my chicanery. All right, and in this game that we are calling Creepy Oki, I sing off-key renditions of popular hit songs, but I change the lyrics and describe classic horror movies that she. Then has to identify and guess correctly. Now, as we mentioned before, there are some bonus points at stake here. Yes. So not only does she get a point if she guesses what movie I'm describing, she will also get an extra point if she tells me the band or artist that recorded that song, and an extra bonus point if she knows the name of the song. So there are three points that are Total. up for grabs right now okay. for each of these. There will be five songs that are going to be sung today on Creepy Oki. Okay. That gives you a total of what, 38 possible points? 15? 15 possible points are up for grabs, which could really boost your percentage. I know. 15 out of 5. 
It's pretty damn good. That's like an A plus. So let's A plus plus with extra credit. So, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, friends. This first song. Let's see if you can guess it. I'm gonna take this bracelet off. This amazing Grider Adventure bracelet. If you guys don't have anything by Grider, you should get it. But I had to take it off so I don't hit the strings. All right. You ready? Yeah. Making my way back home, walking slow, where do I go? No, you're out there. Staring blankly ahead, wearing my mask behind this hedge, oh tell me where? Cause I need you, and I miss you. And now I wonder Of all these homes Which one you're in Cause all I found Are girls living in sin And you know I would fucking Kill them all If I could just see you Tonight All right, that is song one. Do you have any guesses of what the movie I'm describing with that melody and those lyrics? Um, Halloween. It is Halloween. The classic 1978 film from the one, the only, John Carpenter, which introduced the world to probably the godfather of horror. 100%. The Jesus of horror, the Lord and My Savior. My favorite. Mine as well. I put Michael Myers at the tops. Which Always. is why when we made that painting, we had to put Michael Myers in the place Jesus. of prominence. Right? Yeah. Introduce you to Michael Myers and Laurie Stroud. Yeah. Laurie Stroud. Laurie so, Stroud is a badass. I love that's her. That's right. So, all right. One for one there, but can you get the bonus points? What song was I covering and who's the artist that recorded it? I know the artist is Vanessa Carlton. Two out of one. Okay, and what is the name of the song? I think the name of the song is A Thousand Miles. Three out of one. Vanessa Carlton's debut single, which reached number five in 2002, A Thousand Miles. Better known for Terry Crews in White Chick. Very true. Very true. Because it's Perfection. Also terrifying, mm -hmm. but beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yay! Three for one. Okay, okay. Fuck. Hopefully this next one's a little bit harder. Okay. Okay. Are these all movies I've seen? Yes. Okay. I told you they're okay, that's classic okay. well-known movies okay. with classic well-known songs. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let me warm it up a little bit. Father's not feeling his very best Mother worries and needs a rest The kids are sleeping where upstairs Never in their darkest dreams Flies they fill the window screens The priest won't hang around Our house Is the creepiest on the street Our house Is the creepiest on our Our house is the creepiest on our streets Something tells me that you've got to get away from it That's it? That's it, you get a verse and you get a chorus. What classic, well-known horror movie was I describing? Um, I don't know the movie. Uh, can you wager any guesses? Um... Amityville Horror. You are correct. <gasps> really? Okay. Father's not feeling his very best. Okay. Mother worries needs a rest. Okay. The kids sleep unaware upstairs. Okay. Flies fill the window screens. A priest won't hang around. The priest 
I forgot about the priest in the movie, so it kind of <laughs> threw me off. Okay. Yeah, the 1979 okay. classic about the Lutz family, mm-hmm. Amityville Horror. Mm, okay. Remake, very awesome watching Ryan Reynolds oh, cut wood. Shirtless. Chopping oh, wood, God. making wood. <sighs> My God, that guy. All right, so one for one. Now, mm-hmm. what is the name of the band that recorded this classic song? I can tell you right now, I'm not going to get a perfect score because I don't know okay. who sang Our House. Okay. I don't know. You do know the name, though. I do know the name, but Our I, House. Don't, I don't know who sang it. Okay. I'm really bad at this game. So you're at two for one. Okay. And the band is Madness. Yeah, I never would have gotten that. Yeah, the 1982 hit that I think reached number seven. Yeah, by I know the, the song. By the English band, huge song. Our house. Dun, dun. In yeah. the middle of Is the street. Is the creepiest on our street. Yeah, Shit. right. From Camden Town, North London. Yeah, I never would have guessed the okay. name of that. Keep yeah. track of your score, really. Okay. You are at five for two. Yeah. Five for two. Yeah. Damn. We're also recording this so I can go back. Yeah. And just do yeah. it then. But yeah. five for two. Five, five for, for two. two, but keep keep track. Five for two. Okay. All right. How you feeling? I feel good. All right. Um, I'm getting a little bit nervous because the Amityville horror, like that was a shot in the dark, to be honest with you. Like I kind of thought maybe because of the dad, but it was a little bit of a shot in yeah. the dark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. It's a huge song right here. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're five for two. Yeah. All right. Let's see if you can go eight for three after this one. Okay. Can we warm her up? Glad your van came driving through You're the only one left that's alive I look at you and I'm stoked you survived you're mine tonight Now I've got you in my sights With these hungry eyes I got my chance on this dope best disguise I've got hungry eyes Dinner for one, well, it's just you and I. Okay. It took me a while on this one, too. Okay. Is okay. it... What is the movie that I'm singing about? Is it Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I try to choose songs that kind of had a little bit of like a... Yeah, no, I'm loving that. Something that worked sure, with sure. the movie. So Hungry Eyes. I mean, obviously I had to go with Hungry Eyes okay. for a movie about, you know, the 1974 classic from Toby Hooper. Sure. Right? Yeah. Change the game. Change the horror game. Leatherface, inspired by... Do you know the serial killers that he's inspired by? Ed Gein. Ed Gein, that's right. I will always and, know the serial killer oh, that horror I know you will. I know by. you will. So this tells the cannibalistic tale of the Sawyer family. All right, six for three. Now, who sang this song? Hungry eyes. I got my chains on this dopest disguise. I've got hungry eyes. Um, I don't know, but it's called Hungry Eyes. Eric Carmen. Never would have gotten that either. Why doesn't? Why don't these Huge. names sound familiar? You know Eric Carmen. You probably know many songs by Eric Carmen, and you know him because he's this song was on the soundtrack for. Do you know what movie this this was? Dirty soundtrack? Dancing. Dirty Dancing. I knew that. What is the name of this song? Hungry Eyes. Seven for three. Very close. I'm really bad at the artist names. Though. Seven for three. Okay. Sorry, Eric Carmen, if you're watching Dark Paradise. What are you doing here? She doesn't know. <laughs> He's, he's, he's a tiki creep. Oh, okay. Maybe. All right. Could be you. All right. Seven for three? Yeah. Ooh, that's not bad. No. I wanted a perfect score to make yeah. that, but that's okay. I also kind of knew I was going to be bad with the the musicians' names. Um, This is a very obvious one. Okay. 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 All right. Ha, <laughs> 
Well, sorry, but this shit's not right. These counselors alone getting off risky. Yeah, and then I hear my mother's voice through the grunts and moans, like a splash from a big ass lake. And then my body fills with rage. That's it all keeps back in my memory. Mom, it's so painful, and the shoreline is so close. But still so far out of reach Oh yeah Yeah right You think it's easy baby To last, to last all night I'll kill I'll kill you all for my mom Okay I okay, know, I, what is the movie that I'm singing to this very obvious song? It's Friday the 13th. What part? What? This is huge. What? Yes, it, I have to have the part. There was no stipulation about that. It's the. It's not the first one because that's her. Okay, very good. So which one is this? Second or third? I'll give it to you. Okay. Friday the 13th. Two. Part two. Okay. Um, and it's Tom Petty, American Girl, but can I tell you something? What? I'm really disappointed in you. Why? The fact that you didn't turn this into fucking Silence of the Lambs no. is so upsetting to me. I did, I did make notes that you would know this song. One, because it was the, it was the Heartbreakers, like, biggest non-single single. This thing didn't chart. As huge as this song is, when it got released in 1977... Did not chart. Did not do well, right? It may have been an easy point, but, but I it was. Am upset I know. That you didn't but it was a resurgence the in the early '90s. One because it was included in her favorite movie, *The Silence of the Lambs*. I really, yeah. I, as soon as you started playing it, I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be *Silence of the Lambs*." Yeah. See, I had a feeling you would think that. I know, but it would have been. I wanted to yeah. hear those lyrics. Yeah. So, well, could there you work on that. There will be another one. Just I, for me. I will do a song for you. <laughs> okay. All about Science of the Lambs, Thank I you. promise. Thank you. But holy shit, you went three for three on that one. I did. That brings you ten for four. I did. Ten for four. Wow. Okay. I didn't think you were going to do this well, but you're doing very well. Thank you. All right. Damn. Good job. Okay. Thank you. All right. This is the last song for Creepy Oki. Okay. How do you feel? feel pretty good. I mean, we've you're gone, already six points up. Yeah, we've gone through a lot of the ones that I know, um, mm -hmm. just offhand, so I'm a little bit nervous about this last one, but that's okay. I'm ready. I think I'm okay. fine. All right, well, let me warm up the old fingers here. Last song of Creepy Oki. I was just an average girl living in an average life. But then I got the news a bunch of people died. So I had to see what's up. And I found this VHS. Tell me what should I do? How'd I get in this mess? Well, if you watch it, she'll climb through your TV. Seven days. Dead in seven days, oh no. Well, if you watch it, she'll climb through your TV. Tell me, should I watch this thing? Oh no. Um, what is the movie that I'm singing about? Fuck. Um, I can picture it. Uh, is it called? Fuck. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, I can do this. I saw this. Oh, everybody saw this movie. Um, I can see the poster. The poster's <laughs> gonna help me. It is not called The Poster. The Ring! It is The Ring. <laughs> Very good. You went five for five on the movies, didn't you? I did. Okay. I did. So we're at 11 for five right now? 
I think so. Yeah, 11 for 5. You have a chance to go 13 for 5 right now. I don't think I can. Who sings? We've spoken about this. I know. This is, this is why I chose this song, because of the debate. Now, what's the name of the song? Let's go for 12 for 5 right now. Uh, watching? Somebody's watching me? What's your final answer? I don't know. Hold on. You can sing it. I'm like <laughs> trying to picture. You got three seconds. What's uh, the name of the song? Three. Somebody's watching me. 12 for 5. Now, to go 13 for 5, only missing two possible points for a perfect 15 for 5. Who sang this song? It's not coming to you at all. Okay. Nothing? <laughs> no. This is a 1984 single from Motown recording artist Rockwell. Very confusing because a lot of people think this is Michael Jackson because the chorus has guest vocals from not only Michael Jackson, but brother Jermaine Jackson. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have gotten that anyway, yeah. so I'm fine with that. Yeah, so this song reached number two on the Billboard mm. Hot 100. Mm. Came an instant favorite for everybody's Halloween party sure. playlist just because somebody's watching me. It's creepy as shit. It is creepy. Right? And The Ring 2002. Right, American remake of the Japanese horror movie Ringu. Mm -hmm. uh, his old short story was based on the same name. Grossed over two hundred and forty-nine million dollars when it was released on Not like surprising. on like a forty thousand or forty million dollar budget. Not at all surprising. Uh, and its success paved the way for a bunch of Japanese remakes like uh, The Grudge, mm. Dark Water, Shudder. The eye, all of those ones didn't do as well. They're all kind of flops, but although the grudge, the grudge was great. Didn't didn't do well though. Oh, didn't okay. do as well as the ring. The, the ring. ring was the original. Okay. Um, Ben, was that twelve for five? Thirteen for five. Twelve for five. Twelve for five. Give it up for the queen of the cove. <laughs> Hilled it at creepy Oki. My word. I all right. Those bonus points. So She's got those bonus points. Queen of the cove. That's been creepy Oki, you tiki creeps. I wonder what we're gonna play next time. We'll see. All right, tiki creeps, that is Dark Paradise. Thank you for going to Cambodia with us and- Where? Where are we go? Oh shit. Thank you for going to Cam, Cam, Cam. Cambodia. Yeah, that felt much better. That's way more fun. Way better. Thank you for going to Cambodia with us. Thank you for, uh, you know, diving deep into their supernatural, their unexplained, their paranormal, their creepy. creepy. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the cemetery. Where the what? Where the living outnumber the dead. Hope you enjoyed that story about the op. Even if you don't know why the op is what doing what she's doing. Hopefully you got a little creeped out by a disembodied head with fucking viscera hanging out of her neck. Terrifying. Hopefully you get a chance to go watch Nyang Op, the 2004 movie, recommended by our friend Ghostface. That bitch for not being here. But he still sent us our recommendation, so thank you for that. And that's not all we're thankful for. Yeah. We're also thankful for our sponsors. Because, yeah. friends, when you support our sponsors, you also support the creeps here at Creepers Cove. Yeah. So, we couldn't do this for you without them. So... We're very, very thankful. Yes. First, got to give a big old shout out to our big sponsor, Tandawai Rum. You want to hold one of these beautiful bottles? Yeah. Tandawai Rum, distinctly Filipino. It's like our skin colors. That's right. That's true. Undeniably world class rum. Guys, if you don't have Tandawai where you are, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Tiki Creeps. You got to go out there, you have to demand politely, politely. Tandawai Rum, right? Tell your distributors. Tell your liquor store owners, tell your bar backs, your bartenders, your waiters, your waitresses, flight attendants, I don't know, anyone. Kindly ask them, hey, you mind carrying Tandawai rum, the best selling rum in the entire world? You'll thank us for it. You deserve good rum, you deserve Tandawai. So, ask for it, I guess, right? It's not only our sponsor, it's not just Tandawai. No. We also want to thank, because we couldn't drink Tandawai properly without. Surfside Sips. Oh. Surfside Sips. 
Mm. This pickle garnished pickle. thousand tears of a tarantula the just pickle. wouldn't be the same without us adding a little class with glass. Yeah. Right? And you guys can do the same. You guys can change your life. So cute. You start making those steps to go sustainable by ditching some plastic and choosing Surfside Sips glass straws. You do that, guys. Right? Save the turtles. Great. Fine and dandy. Right? But also, when you use glass straws, you try to, uh, you know, embrace a sustainable lifestyle. You're also sipping like you give a shit, or something we say here, right? You're thinking also consciously every time you make a drink and you drink it, you're thinking about those cultures and those communities and those countries that we consider tiki, those people that are going to be most affected by climate change. So head over to SurfsideSips.com. Use that code. DARKP20. DARKP20. D-A-R-K-P-20. You're going to get 20% off your entire order, right? So many options. Right? Whether you, you want a colored bamboo straw, you want some fucking trippy looking ass hookah shit, you want these creepy ass bones, you want a cool ass moai go guy on there, you want a cool little creature, or you just, you just want a classic glass colored straw. Surfsidesips.com. So many options. So many options. You know, that code actually also works somewhere else. It does. It works with our friends. Blue Owl Lads. Blue Owl Lads, guys. Our tiki creeps down in Florida. Doing great stuff, right? Doing charitable events. They're doing pop-ups. They're they're changing the game down there, and they're they're making people aware of Tiki's flair for the the, the dramatic down in there. Yeah. And they're part of the town. They make their own pecan orgeat. It's so good. Thanks to the boys, they finally sent us out another bottle. Also, up, so. look how cute they are. Look at those no, guys. Label. Look at Adorable. that. So good. They also make their own falernum, falernum, falernum. However you want to call it, yeah. orgeat, orjo, orgit, whatever. They make it, and it's delicious. They make their own pre-mixed Saturn great they make awesome shirts they yeah. make they make glassware so support them head over to luowlads.com use that code dark p20 dark p20 d-a-r-k-p-20 and you get 20 percent off everything in their store as well now we also got one more sponsor brand new sponsor that we want to thank old randy down in los angeles from liquid alchemists guys when we're not drinking Cocktails with fish sauce and kefir curry lime syrup with a pickle garnish. We're typically making classic cocktails and or riffs, uh, things that sound like tropical drinks. And you'd be hard pressed to find better syrups to put in those cocktails than Liquid Alchemist. Yeah, just look at that. That's so pretty. Look at these. So they make a bunch of different syrups. And they use the best, the best ingredients, all naturally flavored. Um, head over to liquid-alchemists.com and buy everything they have, mm -hmm. right? They've got coconut. They've got this awesome prickly pear that we're excited to use. They've got, I think, the best pre-made bottled passion, passion fruit, fruit syrup out there. It's very good. Right? But they also make a great orgeat, just like the lads, but with almonds. They're not doing the pecan thing, right? Whatever you need in terms of your syrups, hit up Liquid Alchemists. You can't go wrong. No. Nope. Your syrups... There, it's delicious. Your cocktails will thank you. Your liver will thank you. And you have like a tagline. Your syrups will sing. So, I, don't I don't know. know. We're going to work on that. Yeah. But thank you, Liquid Alchemists. Thank you, Lua Lads. Thank you, Surfside Sips. Thank you, Tandawai. And thank all of you, Tiki Crips, for joining us yeah. for another episode of Dark Paradise. We'll see you next month, October. Yeah. It's time to get creepier than we already are. So until then, until we see you then, friends, you know, stay creepy. And do that tiki. All right. We'll see you tiki creep soon. <laughs>